Okay, do this week's request has come from Dave, uh, and he wants me to review Universal Soldier. Now, I'd never seen Universal Soldier, so when I read the blurb about it, uh, I replied to Dave and said, uh, this looks precisely the sort of shit my son would have enjoyed back in the day. Uh, and uh, Dave replied and he said, uh, it ain't shit, it's a classic. Uh, well, my friend, I will be the judge of whether it's a classic or not. Hmm, yes. So, Universal Soldier, what suggest? Uh, well, you've got Jean-Claude Van Damme, the muscles from Brussels, uh, and Dolph Lundgren, uh, the big Swedish bloke who were in Rocky IV. Now, for some reason, this Belgian bloke and this Swedish bloke uh, are both American soldiers in the Vietnam War. Uh, and Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's all right, he's a decent bloke. Uh, Lundgren, he's horrible. Uh, and they have an argument and kill each other. And I was thinking, well, that was a short film, weren't it? Uh, but no, it skips to present day. Uh, both on them have been transformed into these genetically modified super soldiers called Universal Soldiers, uh, or as they call them in the film, Unisols. What do you suggest we do, Woodward? Let that reporter run off with one of our Unisols? Now, these Unisols are brilliant marksmen, and they're incredibly strong. And almost as if to continually remind us of how strong these blokes are, uh, the producers decide to have the soldiers swanning around in the nude uh, quite a lot uh, during the film. Uh, they probably thought, yeah, we've got some big strapping blokes here with impressive physique, so, uh, you know, let's show them off during the movie. But apparently, they have to swan around in the nude a lot because they overeat, uh, presumably due to their genetic modifications or so much. But what struck me was the clever framing of each shot, because there's always something just in the way of the Todger. Uh, it reminded me of them Austin Powers films where he's swanning around in the nude and there's something always obscure in his genitalia. Oh. But, as well as being very strong, uh, they seem to be impervious to pain. Oh. Yeah, they don't show that they can feel any pain at all. And it seems to be to do with this syringe of chemical enhancements, uh, don't you? Uh, that they keep taking throughout the movie. And Dolph were on the juice in Rocky IV and all, weren't you, cheating bastard? Now, there seems to be some link between the increased strength and power from the juice and their uh, pain threshold. Because at the end of the film, Jean Claude is pervious to the pain, ain't he? Now, this was a little bit confusing for me. So I thought we'd take a, a closer look into it in our new feature, Ickle Ray's Reality Check. <laughs> so yeah, if there's something in a film uh, where I'm confused uh, and I'm wondering, well, is that realistic? Uh, I thought, well, I'd like to ask somebody who's a bit cleverer than me. Ickle Ray, why does the pain threshold increase when they take this stuff? And why does the pain threshold drop again at the end of the film? Well, that's a good question, Raymondo. Uh, there is research that suggests that more athletic individuals tend to exhibit greater pain tolerance uh, and more efficient pain inhibition capabilities uh, than non-athletic folk. But there is a recent piece of research by Giver et al. from 2017, and this investigated pain inhibition capabilities of triathletes under acute controlled psychological stress manipulation. Uh, and they found that in situations of acute psychological stress, triathletes experienced a reduction in pain modulation and consequently a lower pain threshold. So it could be argued that in these stressful situations at the end of the movie, uh, Mr Van Damme and Mr Lundgren are both experiencing intense psychological stress, hence their elevated perception of pain. Don't ever say these reviews ain't educational. Now, it's a clever use of imagery by the director because there's several scenes in the film echo things that happened earlier to him in Vietnam and they bring back memories. And that's what triggers him when he's one of these robotic anus super soldiers and he remembers what happened to him in Nam 
uh, and he flips and turns into a goodie. And he's got various other clever touches to it that, for me, take this a notch above your run-of-the-mill action movie. For example, uh, spoiler alert here, uh, at the end of the film, he gets a chance to save the day. And the scenario mirrors what happened at the start of the film. Because at the start of the film, he didn't actually save the poor Vietnamese villagers. Uh, but at the end of the film, he does manage to save the attractive blonde Caucasian woman. Convenient, that, ain't it? So, Universal Soldier. Uh, were it a classic? No. Uh, but it was very entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed myself watching it. Uh, you know, Denise had gone to bed and I sat down with a cup of cocoa and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, so if you want some brainless escapism and mindless violence, give it a watch. Uh, and if you like this review, like it. Share it, subscribe, click on the, the bell, and I will see you next time for another review. Okie doo!